Halloween, guys, get in the game. Uh, <laughs> I used to work as the assistant to a kangaroo shooter in the Australian Outback. Uh, people eat them, they don't volunteer. Um, and so look, basically we were on a one million acre ranch about an eight hour drive from cell phone coverage. And uh, we drive around the desert at night and since I wasn't allowed to shoot a gun or drive, I'm essentially a golden retriever with opposable thumbs at that point, right? <laughs> so I stand on the back of a truck with a spotlight. I'd spotlight a kangaroo. The dude I worked with would shoot it through the brain from behind the wheel and I would drag it up to the truck pull out a machete, I would have to chop off its head and paws while he cut its heart open, would put a meat hook through its foot, hang it from a cage on the truck, and repeat for eight hours until we had like four and a half tons of meat. I know I look like I'm real good at killing stuff up here, but I'm not, I'm terrible at it, just real bad. Uh, for one thing, it's just real hard when kangaroos are looking at you with their cold, dead brown eyes, and it's even harder when the other guy has already cut their heads off and just like, Hurry up, mate, let's go. You crap at this, right? Or I'd be crying and I'd swing, right? I just had like blood and then tear tracks through the blood and dirt. And uh, I'd swing a machete and miss and hit this rock and all sparks would fly up. And Craig's standing back in the dark, just sharpening his knife. And he's just like, yeah, fucking useless, fucking useless, fucking useless. You hear that two or 300 times, it starts to hurt your feelings a little bit, you know? Uh, I don't know, man. I, so. Why am I having a masculinity contest with an Australian kangaroo shooter? I don't know, but I forgot to bring a tape measure and this is what we're doing, you know? So, like, I just want to get this guy's respect really bad. And one night we're driving around, we got a flat tire. And this I can handle, right? I graduated from high school in the 90s before people totally quit using their hands at all. So, I could jump off of a truck. I'm like, I got this, I got this. You're gonna want to go ahead and take a break. Craig, by the way, is just like, if you were to take several Crocodile Dundees, tie them together with bailing wire to make a Voltron of Crocodile Dundees, and then cover it with like bullet riddled leather, that's Craig, okay? He's got, this guy's got calluses behind his ears. Okay. And he was like, right, we'll see about this. And he's just sharpening his knives, he's like, ksh, 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 like this. So I climb under the truck and I'm going to change the tire and I'm looking around for the lug nuts, on, and it's, it's on the jack. It's a little precarious, but it's pitch black outside. And then I just hear this like, and the underbelly of the truck just falls, and it just goes boom, and falls off of the jack, and the truck just goes, comes down like this, almost crushing my skull, kisses my nose, and then bounces off. And I just lay there for a second, and I felt this cold liquid just dripping onto my neck. And I thought, oh my God, we've got a coolant leak. We're gonna die out here. The sun's gonna come up, it's gonna turn us into jerky, and then we're gonna just die by 9 a.m. It's 110 degrees by 9 a.m. in the sun in the outback. What are we gonna do? The good news is, not coolant. Uh, it was just congealing blood from a kangaroo's neck stump falling <laughs> under my face, neck, and mouth. And uh, I did what anybody in my position would have done. I emitted a series of high-pitched and girlish squeals. <laughs> and I just went, ah, 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 get off, get off, get off. And I'm dancing around in the dust, and Craig's just over there, goes, fucking useless, I knew it. <laughs> fucking useless cunt, useless cunt. If you're bad at something, you're a tired cunt, useless cunt. If you're really lazy, you're standing around fucking the dog, right? So, um, <laughs> and I said, look, I can take care of this, okay? I know how to change a tire in America, like in a driveway. And he's like, psh, psh, psh. What you, know about change, what you know about taking care of yourself, I could ride on my cock with a mop. <laughs> then he dives under the truck, changes the tire with one hand, and like rolls a whole pack of cigarettes with the other one, probably. <laughs> this guy can, he's got a little something for everything, you know, and it's just burning me. So we camped in these tin sheds, like a cor just corrugated tin, slept all day in the middle of the desert next to a diesel-powered meat locker and um, you kind of sweat yourself awake several times a day. And my pants, I only brought one pair of pants because Craig had just called me before the trip. I was like, pack light, I'll see you at the train station in 90 minutes flat. And he didn't say what to bring, so I just brought one pair of pants. And they were so soaked with animal blood that they were like this wearable scab I would put on every night. <laughs> and I could lean them upright in the corner of my room. 
and they would draw the flies away from my face while I slept. So that's, <laughs> let that be a lesson to you. And so I got up to go to the bathroom and I came back and my pants are missing. That's gonna be a problem, I should get on this. And I sit on my bed and I'm like, where are my pants? And then this black thing just like wickers out from under my cot. And I looked under and it's the tail of a six foot long monitor lizard that has come into my room. They're called racehorse goanna and they crawl all over the outback, they're like buzzards and they eat just decaying meat, that's what they live off of. And they have incredibly razor sharp claws and teeth and they are so stupid that if you frighten them in a desert situation, they try to climb the nearest tall thing, which is usually your body. <laughs> and they'll just lazarate you on the way up. We've got to drive eight hours to call 911, so it's gonna go septic, you're gonna die. And uh, I was just like, oh fuck. Like, I cannot show up for work tonight without any pants because I've allowed a lizard to eat them. <laughs> gotta get on this, Jeff, right? So I'm whipping books at this thing, just like discs of Tron under my bed, and I finally hit it in the head, and it starts running off with my pants in its mouth, because these things are a score for this. And then I got it, I remember I hit it in the skull with Cat's Cradle, because I was thinking about all that Ice Nine covering the earth and being like, that sounds amazing right now. And um, it spits my pants out and runs off into the desert, and I thought, I've handled this, I've got a little something to brag about tonight, it's gonna be good. Go to lay down in my cot, and then the walls of the room start going like this. And then the door kicks in and it's just Craig there, silhouetted, wearing only a tiny black like marble bag underwear that uh, Aussies call budgie smugglers. And two of the filthiest Ugg boots anybody's ever seen. And he's like, pointing at me and yelling, and um, I was like, dude, did you let the lizard get your pants, man? Because, like, I handled it, like, I'm good at this. And he was like, you knew? You fucking knew about this and you did nothing? And I said, knew about what? And he drags me down to the kitchen, and in our camp kitchen, the lizard has gone in there, grabbed our cooler and thrown it on the floor, smashed our eggs and all milk has spilled in it and it's danced around in it and licked it up and made a horrible, horrible French toast batter and then run off into the desert when he chased it off and he goes, right, look, it's not about you and your little challenges that you're overcoming, right? It's, it's a team effort, right? When a lizard comes around, you run it off the property. And that's, that's when I snapped. I said, listen, man, I, the next time a lizard tries to eat my pants, I will observe the protocol you've laid down here. <laughs> but please don't act like I was meant to know that. Do I sound like I know this kind of stuff? Dude, I don't shoot kangaroos for fun and like punch sharks for work or whatever you do. And he goes, eh, sharks, they're not like your bears, right? I said, bears? He goes, oh, I reckon if a bear wants to eat you, you're fucked. They can swim, climb, run. And I was like, yeah, maybe not. I've camped around plenty of bears and it really wasn't a problem. They just sniffed my tent, sniffed my car, and then they left. And he said, oh, I'd have been so bloody scared. <laughs> Thank you.